I'm Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. Jimmy Kimmel is having fun with this whole Truth Social app, and he was looking at their community guidelines. He said, the biggest no-no, the one they actually call Truth Number One, they'll delete your account if you use the platform as a tool for a crime or any unlawful activity like... I don't know, starting a riot at the Capitol, maybe? That's a great joke. Now, what I'm wondering is, maybe this is why Trump hasn't been posting on Truth Social. He's banned from that one, too. (laughs) Truth Social is getting a boost from the news that Elon Musk is buying Twitter. Their app is now number one on the Apple Store. We know this because Trump released a statement that said Truth Social is number one in the Apple App Store. A statement he didn't bother to post on Truth Social, by the way, because no one would see it there. He hasn't posted on his own Truth Social app since the day it launched back in February. The last time he ignored something this much, it was named Eric. (laughs) For page six, sources say that Chris Rock has been wearing headphones around his neighborhood in Soho. Not because he's listening to music. He's hoping it'll stop people from talking to him. (laughs) An insider said, it looks like he's listening to music, but it's just so nobody approaches him. Page Six had more of those spies at the Comedy Cellar. It's weird that Page Six always has spies at the Comedy Cellar. It's totally not insiders from the cellar calling Page Six and saying like, by the way, Chris Rock is here tonight. It's that the spies are there 24-7, and if Chris Rock walks in, the spies report back to Page Six. That's totally what's happening, because the spies happen to be there Tuesday night when Chris Rock walked in. During the show, an audience member yelled out, We won't slap you! The spy said Chris is a veteran. He made light of it and moved on. The Post must have some budget for spies. Like, do they have a spy at Caroline's? Is there a spy at Gotham? What if Chris Rock shows up at Gotham and the spy is not there? From the laugh button. Last summer, 10 comedy specials were filmed at the Tribeca Film Festival. Comedy Dynamics is going to release them on video on demand platforms all summer long. These are Josh Gondelman's People Pleaser, Bill Bellamy's I Want My Life Back, Helen Wong's Well Hong, great name, Coco Brown's Famous Enough, Maya DeGiorgio's Maya Maya Maya, Jackie Fabulous's Menoplause, Stephen Michael Cazeta. Do you know who that is? That's Gomi from Breaking Bad. He's a comedian. Yeah, Stephen Michael Cazeta, the New Mexican, Ms. Crackers, Here I Stand, Katrina Davis's Figuring It Out, and Kellen Erskine's Zoomed Out. These will be on various VOD platforms starting May 24th. Now, this is interesting. Good job, Comedy Dynamics. The albums will be released on Apple Music, Amazon Music, Spotify, and other streaming services. Also for purchase starting May 27th. Now, I bring that up. Let me skip down here. I had a story for later in the show, but I'm going to skip down. This whole thing with comedians pulling their material off the streaming services. So I saw this story. Let me do the story and I'll circle back to the main topic. Emily Heller's got a new podcast. It's called I'm Listening, a Frasier podcast. You know, it's one of those TV recap podcasts. Emily Heller and her friend, they watch Frasier and they tell you about it. Vulture writes, Heller comes to the table with an already crazed, fleshed out bunch of recurring characters to kick things off from Frasier Crane's exes and loony neighbors down to Baby the Cockatoo. I never really watched Frasier. Coincidentally, I was talking to my mom last night and she had Frasier on and I was staring at it and the laugh track was horrendous, horrendous. I don't know how you guys watch these things. Horrendous. Anyway, so I saw this story, and you know how I host the show on Live One, the weekly comedy thing? It's like this, except I can play bits. So I was like, oh, this Emily Heller story would be nice. I'll put that in the show. Let me just make sure there's active Emily Heller comedy that we can play. She's got five albums in the system right now. They're not available to play. I'm guessing that's because of this whole, like, licensing, whistling act that everybody's doing. So now Emily's not being played. I'm trying to play your stuff, but I can't. Very frustrating. I'm not sure this whole thing is good for the comedians. So the live one, folks, I'm not going to do the story because I can't play Emily. Does that help her career? I'm not sure it does. So back to Comedy Dynamics. I'm glad you're releasing 10 things digitally starting May 27th. Good job, Comedy Dynamics. Brian Volkweiss, always. Good job. Meanwhile, the Interrobang tells us Helium Comedy is starting their own streaming video content. They have a YouTube streaming channel. There's some clips up already from some people, including, but not limited to, Jeff Dye, John Dora, Alonzo Bowden, a bunch of others. The channel will offer new content on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Drug Carmichael was on Howard Stern. Carmichael said, I told a friend that since coming out, I take better pictures because I'm not worried about looking gay. Before I was like, am I not smiling because smiling is gay? 
He started talking to Howard about porn and told Howard Stern he used to chase gay porn viewing sessions with a shot of straight porn as if it was the lamb's blood to wash away the gay sin. These days, he considers himself a fringe porn fan. I think being closeted probably attracted me to like versions of secret sex. I like porn that's set in public, like stairwells, cars. I'm really into that. Carmichael says he's not active on social media, but he does have a ghost Twitter account on which he follows his favorite porn stars. Howard was wondering who he's into. Carmichael said, bro, I mean, it changes. I should have been more prepared for this moment because I really want to shout them out. I want to have sex with some of them. I don't have Twitter and Instagram. So all I have at this moment, Howard, please help me back so I can bring a list. From bringmethenews.com, the Minneapolis Comedy Festival returning after two years. June 13th to the 19th, the festival includes Steve O and Minnesota's own Maria Bamford. Let's fly through the full lineup. Pinky Patel, J.R. de Guzman, Steve O, Josh Wolf, who's great, Mark Norman, who's great, Eddie B, Teachers Only Comedy Tour, Donnell Rawlings, Mateo Lane, he plays volleyball, he likes pasta, you listen every day, you know what I'm talking about, Callback, Ari Shafir, Jared Freed, Chris Redd, Dusty Slay and Brian Simpson, Maria Bamford, that is a solid festival. No offense, that's a really good festival for Minneapolis. You know, that's not New York, L.A., and we're supposed to kneel before Austin now, but Minneapolis, nice job there. Chelsea Handler got a cover story out of E. I don't know if there's a cover to have her on, but, you know, cover story, big story with Chelsea Handler. She said, I finished a year's supply of mushrooms in the first two weeks of COVID. I was doing mushrooms with my landscaper. I was like, wait, how long is this going to go on? Because I'm going to have to make a new order. In the article, they shared some Instagrams of Chelsea uh, skiing topless. They were like, you've perfected the art of the nude. Do you think we're getting any closer to people not being shocked by the sight of women's nipples? Chelsea said, who cares? I'm just having a good time. But yes, it's ridiculous that women can't be topless while men's bodies are allowed to be out. I think Sarah Silverman said, we're able to nourish and feed with our breasts, but we have to keep them covered. So yeah, there's a complete double standard and a sexualized thing that women can't show their breasts because men, what, will get boners? E, you're known for pushing the boundaries. Is there anything you wouldn't do? Chelsea said, I try not to make fun of ugly children. That's not cool. There was a new episode of my casual travel podcast. It is called Travel is Back. In the current season, you're hearing my recent outing to the West Coast and the greater Las Vegas area. In this particular episode, I went to Fremont Street. Spoilers, I didn't like Fremont Street. If you want to hear me slowly losing my mind and being like, where the hell am I? Listen to the Fremont Street episode of Travel is Back, wherever you get your shows. The Netflix Comedy Festival continues, and guess who's there tonight? We haven't talked about this person in a long time. That's right, the new innovative voice of comedy, Sarah Cooper. Sarah Cooper, 7 o'clock tonight at the Bourbon Room. The LA Times caught up with Sarah Cooper. You know Sarah Cooper. She used to pantomime to Donald Trump videos on TikTok, and then had a Netflix special, and then a CBS sitcom. Sarah Cooper, remember? Yeah. The LA Times said Sarah Cooper is probably the only comedian to go viral without having to say a word in 2020. Her TikTok videos impersonating President Trump made her an instant lip syncing legend. The LA Times said, hey, Sarah, what are some ways that your comedy has evolved since going viral in 2020? Have you incorporated your life now into your stand up? Sarah Cooper said so much happened in 2020. It was just crazy for my career. I really didn't expect those videos to take off. And then, you know, it's one thing to go viral, but they actually changed my life. I was able to get my Netflix special. I was able to auction my books for TV shows. Then in 2021, I actually went for divorce. Oh, that sucks. All this stuff happened where I asked myself questions like, what's really important to me? How do I want to spend my time? And I realized I didn't want to spend my time married anymore. And so I ended up doing that. Now I'm spending a lot of time with my family. They're Jamaican. They live in Florida. So I have a bunch of material from my mom and from everybody giving me advice throughout the divorce. And if you take something that's kind of sad, like a divorce and find the humor in it, it's really what this pandemic has been about for a lot of comedians. This took a weird turn. I'm just here to goof on TikTok videos, Sarah Cooper. Now you're making me sad. The LA Times asked, can you see yourself doing lip sync content on Trump again? Thank you for the save, LA Times. Or possibly find a new angle on it? Or are you over it? Sarah, there was a moment early on when I was making these videos and I was just like walking down the street and this car drove by and the guy pointed at me and yelled, hey, it's Trump. And I was like, oh no, what have I done? Because I hate this person and yet now I'm like associated with him. I always wanted to do comedy. I always wanted to perform. Yeah, I made those videos. Yeah, I was lip syncing. I was performing and I was editing them and was doing all this stuff. But I really want to keep doing that, especially because he just says the same thing over and over again. 
I think I'd kill myself if I had to do that anymore. But there's like a funny persona in there that I captured in terms of like this ignorant guy who thinks he knows everything. And it kind of ignited that for me. That sort of persona was really fun to play, especially as a woman, especially as a black woman. Sarah Cooper, 7 o'clock tonight at the festival. And let me open up my bookmark calendar and see who else is there. Today is Saturday, April 30th at noon. A free event outdoors at the Hollywood Palladium. I hope you downloaded today's episode early. Big Mouth, meet the hormone monsters. That's at noon. Dave Chappelle again at 7. Wanda Sykes at 7. Fortune Feimster at 7. See, I learned. Doug Stanhope at 7. Oh, I love Doug. Doug is fantastic. This festival is so good. Marlon Wayans at 7. Catherine Ryan, 7 and 9.30. The Laugh Factory presents the All Stars of Comedy, featuring Finesse Mitchell and Dan Adute. Nice comedians. Not sure those are the all-stars. Let's do that. Hey, I'm going to form the all-stars of comedy. I don't know. Off the top of my head, Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr might be two guys I'd pick. I might take Chris Rock right now. He's pretty good. Jerry, CK. These might be the all-stars. Mulaney, Gaffigan. My team's pretty good. Who, who's on your team? Dana Dude? Wow, okay. Sarah Cooper at seven. Natalie Palamedia's, oh, she's got a new show. I did not know that. That's awesome. Also at seven. All right. I love playing this game. Let's pretend we were at the comedy festival tonight and you were like, Johnny Mac, what are we going to do now? We got to make some tough choices at seven o'clock. Uh, as much as we want to see Chappelle, let's try and see Chappelle a different day. Huh. If we go see Sarah Cooper, we get great content for the podcast. Natalie Palamedia's, I wonder if she's doing another show. No, she's only doing the one. Her last show was so good. I, I know this is crazy. We might have to go see Natalie. Seven o'clock. I think that's the play tonight. Surprised there's not more shows later at 930. They're all smaller. Aristotle and Asif, Atsuko Okasuka, Greta Teitelman. I think for that late show, maybe we do go see the Laugh Factory All-Stars of Comedy and hope somebody shows up. Wow, too many good shows at seven o'clock. And from Chortle, two new podcasts launched by the Dave Comedy Channel in the UK. Josh Whittacombe and James A. Caster's show is based on their TV format Hypothetical, but this time they must answer absurd theoretical questions instead of asking them. Each episode will feature a comedian guest host interrogating them on their answers. A. Caster said, After years of delighting in the panic of our guests, Josh and I can't wait to see how much easier answering hypotheticals is for a couple of cool cucumbers like us. Bring it on. Love it. The other podcast is Jordan Brooks. Look at what you've done on it. Brooks interviews come to guess about their life. But while it starts as a traditional chat, the podcast takes a surreal turn as the conversation imagines each guest's future life right up to death. <laughs> the broadcaster describes it as this is your life, but with an existential comedic twist. I'm going to subscribe to both of these. Hypothetical launches May 5th. Jordan Brooks later in May. Someone to remind me to download that. Like, if they're not out yet, I can't subscribe to them. Should I leave myself a note? I'm too lazy. That's your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, wherever you get your shows. If you want to support the show, buy me coffee.com slash daily comedy news or become a premium subscriber on Apple Podcasts. See you tomorrow.